I don't know if anyone's doing intro introductions today, but I can happily introduce myself. So I'm Chris West from uh, Kozaic. I work on the Finsomble team and one of the maintainers for FDC3, uh, as I know several of you know and have to deal with me on a regular basis. But anyway, what I'm talking about today is the FDC3 workbench, which is intended to help you um, integrate FDC3 into your applications fast and easy. So for those of you who don't already work with FDC3, I'll give it a bit of a definition or an introduction to provide context. Essentially, as I'm sure you do know, banks and hedge funds all use a huge ecosystem of in-house and vendor applications, OMSs, trading applications, market data apps, analytics, CRMs, etc. And the lack of interop between those applications or the ability for them to talk to each other and uh, tell them what they're doing leads to having to implement lots of manual processes for workflows. And those are inefficient, error prone, and are often operated inconsistently. We're often told that traders skip out things that they're supposed to use because they've got to get a response out in time. And it's just because it's inefficient. Now, proprietary solutions for those problems certainly do exist. We've had them in our product for four or five years now. But we're well aware they're not the right answer. They lead to market fragmentation, vendor lock-in, um, application vendors who don't know what to target or have to target multiple different proprietary APIs, so they can't do all of these things. So the solution to that, we believe, is the open universal connectivity standard that is FDC3. It's designed to help the desktop apps talk to each other without a back-end integration and is often described a bit like fix for the desktop where fix messages often pass between backends, we pass messages between front ends of apps. Now, FTC3 is put together out of four key concepts, often referred to as the four pillars, and that is a specification for context data, which is really the standard for the content of the messages, a set of intents, which are sort of like verbs, actions that you want to happen. So I want to view a chart or view an analysis. And they've got a predefined, pre-agreed meaning. There's an application directory that standard that is used as a registry of what applications are available on the desktop and what intents they support. And finally, an API, the desktop agent API, which is a set of shared operations or an interface for operations that can be implemented and then used by lots of different app vendors. Now, they're generally two types of participant in FTC3. There's the desktop agents, who we tend to refer to as the sort of hub of the desktop. They make the thing happen. They implement the FTC3 API and make it available to all the applications. Examples of those are products like Finsomble, Glue42, and others. Um, there are also in-house developed containers at various banks and buy sites, and even a browser extension um, that is another Finos project, the FTC3 desktop agent Chrome extension. The other side is the FTC3 enabled applications. If the desktop agent is the hub, these are the spokes of the desktop. And they use the API provided by the desktop agent to talk to each other, to send messages. And those are the things like the OMSs, EMSs, pricing charts, market data tools, et cetera, that I've mentioned. And sitting between those is another thing provided by the desktop agents, which is a resolver UI, which is often used to pick applications to resolve intent. So I want to view a chart show me a list of applications that can do that and let the user pick one. Now, how FTC3 is used in the wild is to connect those applications from different vendors. For example, on a typical desktop, we might have Charles River, uh, the investment management system, might be, you know, be using an order blotter or something. That's got built-in FTC3 support they're developing with Finsomble at the moment. Something like Bloomberg or another proprietary terminal, that may or may not support FTC3. Bloomberg doesn't, but has Terminal Connect, which can be used through a translation layer you can put in. So FTC3 can drive Terminal Connect and show various things. You have your own applications that you've built. It's easy to add support for those. We're hoping to make that easier with the workbench. And then something else like FX Connect, um, which again is currently implementing FTC3 support and which should be available to you soon. So a typical workflow through these might be clicking on an order in the order blotter in Charles River. That might drive some context into Bloomberg and bring up various charts, analyses, news, et cetera. Might also drive that on into your own proprietary calculations or signals, 
trader feedback applications, research applications, et cetera, ultimately resulting in being able to push something onward into something like FX Connect to actually stage or execute a transaction. In turn, that could notify other applications that something's been done, something's been executed, that will often then be reconfirmed by another protocol like Fix or something else. But how do you actually then do FDC3? How do you start using it in your applications? And I'll do this first from the perspective of an app vendor or in-house app development team. The typical first step is obviously to explore your use cases. What actions do you need to invoke or listen for? What messages do you need to send in order to make that happen? You're then gonna start experimenting with the API. That means getting access to a desktop agent. Um, for example, you can get Finsomble, which is free for non-production use cases. So if you're just trying to implement it into a vendor application, we'll let, we'll let you go and do it. You then need to learn the API, and that probably involves building a test application, some sort of toy app that you're gonna make some of the calls in, see how it works. You then actually sit down and implement your integration into the real applications. I mean, adopting or creating context types to represent your data, picking or defining intents to represent your actions, and then finally setting up the context sharing, listening for the intents, listening for context broadcasts. And then finally, you're gonna test that integration, which means finding something else to talk to to make sure it works. So again, you're gonna build a test application. This is often done to the sort of bare minimum standard that you need to in, or in order to make it work. Now, how do you do it FTC3 from the perspective of a desktop agent, vendor, or developer? Well, this is obviously our experience of it, is you're gonna probably wade right in and implement the desktop agent API, but then you've got to test it for compliance with the FTC3 specification, and then we're back to building a test app again. Um, th then once it goes out, you've got to provide support to application developers. That means helping them learn to use the API as they plug it into their applications. And again, you're back to publishing a test application or other examples for people to go and use. So, I mean, that, that's how it's done, but what's the problem? It, we found, as we've helped multiple firms to do this, that developers sometimes struggle to actually get started. They, building that first test application sometimes takes them a while to do, where because there's a lack of examples or learning material, something that Finos is actually gonna address in November, I think, when they're releasing their training materials, it takes them a while to get going. But there's also a lack of reference implementations for compliance testing, both for your own app and for the desktop agent. That leads to lots of duplicated effort from lots of different firms on throwaway test applications implemented to that bare minimum standard. So it, our response to that is to introduce the FDC3 workbench. We've built it for our own use. We're contributing it to FDC3. It's been developed by the team working on Finsomble itself. And it's essentially, it's a developer app for FDC3. It's gonna replace those throwaway test apps. It hopefully simplifies the learning curve for other teams getting started with it. Um, they don't have to build any applications. You get two copies of it up and start them talking to each other, as I'll show you in a minute. And it'll provide a test harness for apps and desktop agents. Um, as the standard advances, we're going to need to do more testing of our desktop agents for compliance with those standards to make sure apps are really portable between um, different desktop agents and we need the reference imp implementations to do that. So without further ado, I will wade into a demo of the workbench. And basically I will load it up in Chrome and the first thing you're gonna get if you load it into Chrome is a message telling you the FTC3 API is not there. This is not gonna work. It's not a standard web API, it's not there. So if it picks up that it's not there, it's not going to load for you. Um, but if we have, if we mess with the Chrome extensions for a moment, I can load up the FTC3 desktop agent Chrome extension written by Nick Colber and um, actually it forms another separate project within Finos. So if we turn that on and reload the application, we've got a little icon up there with a channel selector and this time the workbench loads. It's given me back a list of channels returned by the extension. I can join one. And if you see the little icon up in the top on the extension, join the yellow channel, you can jump to the red channel, and there we go. Um, you can also read that back through the API, which allows you to read your get current channel, essentially. Um, 
but the Chrome extension is currently in need of some maintenance. It doesn't support the latest version of FTC3. It's, it's starting to get some problems with some of the test apps. So I'm going to continue this demo in Finsomble, which supports FTC3 1.2. And I'll use my shortcut here to launch the workbench. And there it is again. Now we've got a different list of channels. So these are the ones that Finsomble sets up. So we, we happen to number them. Uh, they come with colors again. So if I join it, you can see it's actually displayed on the window Chrome for an individual window. Uh, normally, these are set from the linker icon up in that top corner. So I can turn it off again. And there, I haven't got a channel set. Join another one through the API. There we go. Now, once we're on a channel, we need something to put onto it to create some sort of message. So I'm going to set a context. To make life easy, the um, Workbench helps you set up templates for context types so you don't have to keep typing it in. I know I've typed in an FTC3 instrument about 400 times in the last few months. Uh, so it helps to save these. It validates the JSON of what you put in. So if it's not current, this one's not a valid context type yet. But if I pop a type field in, and name that type. We should get rid of that validation message down the bottom. It's not currently valid JSON. And then this is the minimum you need for an FTC3 context is a type field. Uh, but there are some other fields defined. So if I pop in an ID and I make that a string, that doesn't validate against the context schema, which is what it's warning me about there. I'm also missing a comma. We'll sort that out. So we're not valid against the context schema. And if I fix that, make it an object, and then add in an ID field. They're usually named fields. And these ones can be strings. We've now got a valid context type. So we'll go ahead and save my custom template there, which will pop it into a menu. And I could set the current context for the application which is represented on the right-hand side in the toolbox column. So I can work on a different one. Uh, so we can select any of the types that are built into the standard at the moment, a list that I hope to see get a lot longer over the next few months as we work out some others. But here's our basic um, Microsoft example from the standard. Set that as the current context to switch back and forth. Um, typically, you'll probably want to set up different versions of the same type. So I like testing with Tesla. No prizes for guessing what my next car is likely to be. We are just set that up. Have a guess at the RIC. And there is no way in the world I'm going to remember the ISIN code for Tesla, so we'll just delete that. And just save that as a custom example. So we've got it in our list. Make it easy for me to switch back and forward. And then after we've got context, we're going to need something to actually send this over to. So I'm going to start Chart IQ, which I, the Chart IQ Advanced Chart Template now has built-in support for FTC3. It's nice and easy to turn on, so we'll pop that on the same channel. And I can go and broadcast our current context, which is picked up by Chart, chart IQ. We'll show that. We switch back to the Microsoft example and broadcast that. There we go, we're testing um, context sharing quite easily. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here because Chart IQ's already got built-in support. Um, so another way of working with this would be to have two copies of the workbench talk to each other to start with. It's a simple little experiment that um, I think gets often gets developers over the initial hump of starting to work with the API. We'll pop Chart IQ down the bottom so that you can still see what we're what's going on. And if I add that to the yellow channel as well, and we go and broadcast our context again, nothing happens, which is correct, because we haven't actually added a context listener yet. So if we jump back to the context panel, we can go and select a context listener. So we'll, we'll listen for FTC3 instrument, add a listener which immediately your note on the right hand side picks up the context that's already sitting on the channel, which is what's supposed to happen according to the standard. So if we switch back to our Tesla type, create the context and broadcast it, there we go, there's our next message has arrived. 
And if we broadcast a contact, create that context, broadcast it, again, nothing happens because we're not listening for that type. So the FTC3 standard lets you listen for all contacts or specific ones, you get filtered lists. So if we add the all listener, you can see I've already received that contact and anything else that I transmit will be received on that particular one. So country also is picked up. So you've got, you've got those two options. And we can basically just review a log of the things we've sent. If we're not getting the behavior that we're expecting, we can see exactly what sort of messages we sent, what the format of them looked like when we received them, um, confirm that nothing's changed on the way through, which is something we might start doing in future in FTC3, as we've been talking about earlier on today. Now, let's just do a bit of clean up, delete those listeners uh, before we move on to the next bit. intense so let's just set up a context again because we're going to need it actually pop back to this if you're learning it's easier to copy and paste so one of the ways that it makes it easier to learn the standard is you can always copy code snippets or in this case I've copied the context I've set up there so I can just paste it off into my IDE um, if I want code snippets for a particular action there's a copy button next to it every action button in the application, so I'm just copy, paste it into my IDE, start adding a bit of code. Our code goes here. And then let's go have a look at the intent support. So intents again work with the current context of the application of the workbench. Uh, it doesn't have to work that way in your app, but it makes this nice and easy to understand as you're going through. So we'll go back to the context panel and pick a one of those context templates we've set up. Create that context again. Pop back to intents. And pick an intent type, so some sort of verb. We want to view a chart, raise that intent. And up pops the resolver that I mentioned earlier. This isn't provided by the workbench. This is provided by the, your desktop agent. And it shows me the applications that I can launch so in this case, we'll pick chart IQ again and launch a new instance of that with our context. And that's come in and immediately loaded Microsoft as per our context. Now, an optional thing you can implement in Desktop Agent, you can send it to a running application as well, which is something that Finsomble supports rather than starting a new window every time. We'll pick it and send it down to our little one that's looking at the bottom. We're expecting to do a bit more with uh, instances in FTC3 in the future. Now, if I want to do this in the workbench, I can go ahead and add a listener again, just like we did for a context type. So I'll pick a view chart listener. And as it's an optional feature of FTC3, sort of runtime registration, it wasn't registered in the app directory. Finsomble's popped up there a little warning message to me. It allows me to do it for development purposes, but now, you'll notice the workbench doesn't appear in that list of new applications I can launch, but it does appear in the list of running applications. So I can select that one and route my intent over there where you can see it's received just like the contexts are and you can check the type of object. So where that's gonna be useful is when you're starting to test the behavior of your own application, making sure the data is formatted correctly, making sure it comes through okay, your application directory has, has routed it correctly. So, for example, if I use this order management mock-up that we used to demo for Ensemble, just add a couple of orders into it, and I can use the view chart button on this Rio Tinto order row to raise that intent for view chart. So, it's Rio Tinto, and hit view, we've got the resolver, send it over to FTC3 Workbench, and I can see the exact format of the message that the app developers for that application set up to send over for me. So useful for QA testers, for example, to see that they've got exactly the right thing. Also, we added in FTC3 1.2, the ability to raise just a context, which forces the desktop agent's resolver to show you, or should show you a list of the types of actions you could do, like you do with a file dialog. What, what do you want to do with this file? So up here, I can view a chart or I can view news, and I'll put a different list of applications for each one. So I'm gonna view chart and off we go to chart IQ again. So that's 
pretty much the size of it. That's the basic operations in FTC3. We've got a little bit more to add with app channels coming in. Um, there are a bunch of other things that we're looking to add to FTC3 and 2.0, which will hopefully all then be represented in the workbench in short order. And you might ask why we're open sourcing the workbench. Why isn't this just the Finsomble FTC3 workbench shipped with the product, as Leslie asked us when we started. We're basically at Cosaic making a huge investment in FTC3. Both our, both our products um, integrate it. We've got a desktop agent in Finsomble. We've got built-in support in ChartIQ, so it can be dropped into any desktop container. And we know the industry trend is happening. We're talking to people about it all the time. Um, but firms are struggling, individual developers are struggling to get started with just how to do it. And we believe that contributing to the FTC3 standard and project is not just about writing the specification and raising issues to add new functions to it, but helping people to actually adopt it. So why we're here speaking, but also why we're creating the workbench, we're trying to make that easy to pick up. And you might also ask how you can get involved. Now, I was going to ask you to come and review the PR. We've, it's sitting ready to go into FTC3, but as uh, a couple of the other maintainers uh, reviewed that for me this morning. I think we can have a little bit of fun. I don't know if it's going to... Right, we'll drag it over onto that screen. We've got a giant pull request up here. And I think, at least on the improvals, we can go ahead and merge that pull request and have a little bit of uh, open source in action. Yay. So, there you go. <laughs> when, uh, so... <laughs> no, I can't. It's gone now. No takesy backsies. So don't review the PR. You can go and check it out when the GitHub workflow has run, assuming it, it runs without an error. Hopefully, in a few minutes, you'll be able to access it up there instead of the URL we put it hosted on. So we've added it straight to the FTC3 repository for maintenance with the spec and website. Didn't think a separate project was warranted needs to be maintained against versions of the specification. It's easier for all of us who are already involved to use it. And if you find a problem with it while you're using it, just raise a PR or an issue and help us get it sorted. Um, if you're checking that out, you should also check out uh, Johan Sanderson's, another one of our maintainers from Faxet, FDC3 Explained application. It's on a different PR. It's going to go into a similar spot. He's got a slightly different approach with it. He's built a vanilla JS. Um, applications designed to be super simple code that's really easy to read and copy and paste into things where we develop more of a React application as a, as a workbench. So different uses, but same, same intentions. Also, we're always looking for new maintainers, editors, contributors for FTC3. So if you're using it, come along, provide us feedback, raise issues, um, check out the to-do list for this application. Well, there's also a to-do list on uh, the issues list for FTC3 itself. So if, if you or anyone at your organization can spare a small amount of time to contribute, it'd be very much appreciated. Come and join the standards working group meetings uh, once a month. There's also discussion groups we're splitting off for things. We're going to be splitting off one to look at context types and intents over the next couple of weeks as well for all those things that need to get added. And you can find it all there. So as I said before, I'm going to do one shameless plug uh, if you are a vendor looking to Im integrate FTC3 and need something to test it in, come and check out Finsomble. It's available uh, straight on GitHub, so you can just download it and get started. So we've got, I assume, a few minutes left. I know the, uh, the bar doesn't open for another 25 minutes, so if there are <laughs> any questions, we've got 25 minutes to kill. <laughs> but you don't have to stay here that long. I think uh, Gab wants you for his closing remarks before then. Rico. <laughs> That's why I look like a rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> Well, we actually used the NPM module that you worked on uh, that made life very, very easy to, <laughs> to build. <laughs> does sound pretty set up, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was um, the developer who did a lot of the work. Um, I did a lot of the polish on the end. Another guy did a lot of the setting up. 
It was his first time using FTC3, and he found it really easy based on the NPM module and the documentation. So um, that was a great start. He did have a whole bunch of questions about how it should work. What's this thing supposed to do? So we worked up a lot of wireframes to explain it. And the, the, the goal is basically to eliminate that learning step for people in future. Um, so he's now thoroughly polished on it. Um, but with a bit of luck, uh, we people can get started by literally throwing up a copy of the workbench, throw up another one, start talking to it. We've got an introduction video based on that. Hopefully, you find a way of we'll find a way of shoehorning it into the FTC3 training as well, um, because as soon as you've done it a couple of times, it's all really clear. It's it's a simple API to use. It's just when you're faced with a big documentation portal and a lack of videos or training materials. I'm finding like lots of the younger generation of developers really just want to watch a video on how to do it, or they want to find a tool that they can copy and paste code out of. I mean, the older guys amongst us would rather go into a documentation portal and scan, read it, and, and get started, but the next generation really have a different approach to learning how to do things. They like reading code better. They like copy and paste, yeah, video tutorials. So we've recorded a screencast, so a much shorter version of this uh, tutorial that we'll post as well. I think we can probably link off the resources page too. And hopefully, I've got an issue open for that resources page on the FTC3 website. So if anyone else has materials that are about learning FTC3 or tools that are open for use um, that they want to link off that, do get in touch. I would like to think so. There is, um, because FTC3 um, doesn't actually, it defines some use cases, doesn't actually define all the workflows. It is a little bit harder to build automated testing for every case. Um, but I know there is a desire to work towards some automated compliance testing, for example, for desktop agents. And that, I think, is a lot easier to build than uh, or general purpose automated testing for applications. So this will allow a scripted manual compliance test very simply for a desktop agent. You'll just run through a, a script, does it do these things, check these outputs. Um, so a, a different tool for automated testing is probably needed, but it could probably be built onto the workbench as a base very, very easily. So you sort of hit go and it runs down, doom, 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 tests preferably in a way that can be also automated for end-to-end -end testing and on a GitHub repository. So definitely something we've talked about and something we'd like to work towards. we should be very grateful for the support the Linux Foundation and Finos have provided in finding and funding those people for the specification rewrite. Really, the goal is to take it from the quite narrative specification that is at the moment to a formal, much more easily testable specification that will still be supported by friendly documentation, examples, and tooling, but something that's a lot more precise and could even head towards a formal standard, perhaps not ISO, but perhaps some other certification, IETF or something. Okay. Thank you very much.